Hey everybody, I'm Ebony. This is Ebony's Creativity. Thank you so much for joining me here on my channel. In today's video, I am trying something super creative that I have not seen another video for, but I just wanted to attempt this and see what it would happen. I'm pretty sure some of you have probably seen Mercury Glass, uh, DIY Mercury Glass videos before. So I wanted to try that out on a piece of furniture and I wanted to see exactly what would happen. And I think it did give me a pretty cool result. So I'm very excited about having this new technique on my channel. So if you would please subscribe to my channel if you have not already. If you have and you are a returning watcher, thank you so much for returning. Leave me comments and let me know what you think about the piece. Here's my disclaimer to all of you wood purists. I had to try this method on a solid wood piece of furniture because it involves water. You can't put water on the different kind of materials that other furniture is made out of, for example, particle board, because it will destroy it, it will swell, and it will not be useful anymore. So if you are a purist and you are watching because you've seen me attempting a lot of restoring furniture lately, don't come for me, don't hate me, still enjoy the video and take what you can get from it, please. Um, I had to do this on a solid wood piece of furniture, but at the end of the day, this is just paint and it can be removed at any given time by one of you purists in the future. So thanks everybody for watching and let's hop right on into the video. Here's a piece that we are going to be working on today. I got this for free from Facebook Marketplace. If you are interested in learning how to score free furniture, I have a video on this channel about that and I will link it in the description box below. This piece is just a small little chest of drawers. It looks like it once had something attached at that top piece. I can see some nails sticking out of it. The top is in really rough shape. Um, here's the maker's mark on the back. So we know that this is Salem Maple. And look at how beautiful the inside of these drawers are. And we can see it's from the Lee Line Leeds brand. I did look that up and I did not see that it is a a piece that is worth a lot of money, so I'm okay with doing what we're going to be doing today on it. I'm starting out by removing the drawers and all of the hardware and placing them in a Ziploc bag. And just as an FYI, I have already cleaned this piece at this point. It was super dirty when I got it, but it was late at night and I did not want to leave it in my car or bring it in my house full of spiders like it was, so I had to clean it in the dark, hence why you didn't get any footage of that. But this one was just very dirty and very stinky, so I wanted to go ahead and just clean it before I sand it. That way I would not grind all the dirt that was in it into the wood. Here's how all the drawers looked once all the hardware was removed. And like I said, I'd already cleaned them off, and so now we are ready to start sanding. So I'm using my sander and 220 grit sandpaper. And I am just going to make quick work of removing all of that failing top coat and any residual dirt off of all of my drawer fronts. Here's how my drawers looked once they were all sanded down. I don't always do this, but in this case, I'm going to be sanding the inside of the drawers as well. One, because they are solid wood and I'm able to get away with sanding them without worrying about destroying them. And two, because this dresser does have that old dresser smell and I'm just trying to get most of that old gunk off. This backing piece looks like it once held something on. As you can see, it has nails sticking out of it. Maybe it was a mirror, I'm not sure, but it's loose and I don't really think it's adding any, anything to the design at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this piece as well. And it's just on there with two screws. And then I'm going back in with my orbital sander and some 120 grit sandpaper followed by 220 to clean up the top of this piece. As you can see, it has definitely seen better days. So I am just going to really go in with my 120 grit sandpaper and then to clean all this old residue off and all the old finish. And then I'll go in with my 220 to smooth everything out so that it is ready for paint. 
I have been wondering if you guys would like a video on sandpaper basics, you know, like what grit to use for what and that sort of thing. So if you would like a video like that, leave me a comment down below and let me know. I then continue on with 220 grit sandpaper and I am doing a scuff sanding on the rest of this piece, which is where I am not necessarily trying to remove all of the finish and get down to raw wood, but I am trying to remove the top coat and any remaining gunk from this piece's former lives. And I'm really just trying to give my paint a scuffed finish to stick onto. There was one piece of trim across the bottom of this piece and I'm just going to hit it with a hammer a couple of times and knock it off. It's just attached by a few nails and it's just one solid piece of veneer. So I thought it looked a little bit old fashioned and it was damaged on one side if you remember from the original clip. So I just decided to remove it. I didn't think it was worth salvaging. After I removed the trim piece, I was able to clean it back off and go ahead and bring it inside and get ready to start painting. I've got my water mister here, my old faithful 045 Klingon brush, which is the only professional brush that I have, and some coal black paint from Fusion. I'm going to start out by misting my brush as well as my drawers with my water mister, and then I'm just going to go ahead and do a light coat of coal black on all the drawers. When I was looking for a water mister, I could not find one. So if you are in that same predicament, the one that I have was formerly a hair product and I got it from Sally's. So I did use the product and I actually kind of liked it for my natural hair. But after that, I just kept the bottle and I was able to use this. So if you need a mister bottle, check Sally's. If you are wondering why I am not priming, for one, if you watched my last video, you will see that I accidentally skipped priming and I discovered that I really didn't need it because the paint adhered quite well. Typically, I don't trust it. I don't think I will make this my permanent method, but because of the finish that I'm going for on this piece, it doesn't have to look perfect. And I think that if it did get a little dinged or scratched or something like that, it would maybe just add to the effect that I'm going for because it's not really a clean, neat look. It's kind of more edgy. So... That's one reason why I did not use a primer also because I have white primer and I'm using black paint and since black is not a color that I usually do I couldn't remember if the last time I did a black piece I used that white primer or if I had a tinted one and I didn't feel like thinking about it anymore with this project I kind of just wanted to go so I just went. Some of you were along with me for my journey when I first used this black paint on a buffet restoration and I was really alarmed when it came out kind of purple in color so if you ever use cold black by fusion and you see those kind of purple bluish looking streaks don't worry it will dry black also fusion is not normally a one coat coverage so I will be doing two coats typically I'll do two coats and a half coat which is mostly water and a little bit of pigment on that half coat but in this particular instance, again, because of the finish that I'm going for, it didn't have to look perfect. And so I did not do the half coat. I just did two coats of coal black and called it a day. If you are wondering about my painting technique, I normally always paint with the grain. I normally like to do the areas with any raised or recessed areas first and then go back in and fill toward the middle with long straight strokes. So typically when I'm painting, I'm going from the outward areas, then going painting my way inward toward the center. Typically with this fusion paint, it doesn't really matter the direction that you do your first coat, but I like to just keep it uniform and I always do mine in the same direction to minimize brush strokes and such. But just as a general rule, I just try to do things in an orderly way. And so I like to keep all my brush strokes in the same direction for all of my coats. And when I feel my brush starting to drag or I notice bad deep brush strokes, I always mist my brush with my water mister. And if it's still feeling a little bit dry, I will mist the piece as well. So I set these outside and here's how they look as the second coat is drying. 
Now for the fun part, I've got Dawn Power Wash, Gold Spray Paint, Water, and I am just going to lightly mist my piece with the Dawn Power Wash. My regular watches have already met my small niece, but today I've got two bigger nieces on hand and they are here to follow me with the gold spray paint once I put down my coat of Dawn Power Wash. I think we got a better result when we waited a little bit to do the spray paint when we kind of just let the Dawn sit. However, it was really hot this day. By the way, if you're going to do this, do this on a very hot day. Um, but... The Dawn started to dry up on the dresser and then I was afraid that it wasn't going to work because it was literally evaporating. So I just had them come right behind me with the spray paint. Because I was really afraid that the Dawn was going to dry up, I went ahead and rinsed this off. But like I said, if I had my way, I would have left it a little bit longer. But I've just got water in this spray bottle and as you can see, as soon as you pour the water on it, you start to get this really beautiful mercury glass look. I wanted to make sure that I got all the Dawn off, but I also did not want to use more water than necessary, like take a water hose and just start spraying because it is very counterintuitive for me to put water on my wood purposely. Normally, I try to avoid the two meeting like the plague, but in this particular instance, I needed to use water to get the Dawn off, but I just wanted to kind of Use enough to do my job, but not any more than what I needed. So that's what you see me doing here. You're really relying on the water to remove the Dawn because the spray paint is not yet dry at this point. So if you start wiping it, you will see your white marks in the spray paint. Ask me how I know. So you're going to have to rely on the water, but make sure to do this on a very hot day. If I could give a piece of advice, I do the Dawn part in the shade and then the water part in the sun. And just check that out. Look how cool that looks. I really like this. I think it's much different from what I normally do and really edgy and funky. So I really enjoy doing this. But let me know what you think. Here's some more footage of me doing more of the same throughout the rest of the piece. Just spraying with my Dawn and then following up with my gold spray paint. And because I know most of you will probably notice I want to comment that I am in the middle of rebuilding my deck, so that is what you see in the background. But in this instance, I was able to kind of use one of the holes to my advantage because instead of wetting up my deck and letting the piece sit in the water, I was able to just use this hole and let the water run down below the deck, which I thought was really cool. So that actually helped me out in this instance. One of these days I am going to finish this deck. I ran out of wood when I was doing it. And so I just kind of left it and moved on to other projects, but I will get back around to finishing it. So don't judge my deck in my backyard. Just to reiterate, I do wish that I had done this part in the shade and then moved it into the sun to dry. Also, I had two cans of spray paint, one of which was going kind of empty and you can see it spurting out here. I definitely liked it better when I was able to just do long, smooth, straight strokes with the spray paint. So I would advise to make sure that you have a full can as opposed to trying to use one that you might have already had on hand because once it starts spurting, you can actually tell in the finish. For me, I did notice it and I liked the look of just the smooth, solid gold spray paint strokes better than the splotchy ones created by my can running out of paint. Another tip is that you have a few seconds to add more Dawn if you start spray painting and you don't like how it looks or you don't think you've had enough coverage with the Dawn initially. You can go back in with the Dawn and add a little bit more but you only have a very tight time frame to add more. And here's how the top ended up looking. In this clip, there's still some water on it, but I'm just letting the sun do its thing and dry it all up for me instead of wiping it. And here is more footage of us continuing on. In this clip, my two nieces are just going to town on this piece. So we've got one spraying Dawn and one spraying spray paint. And then eventually the other one will join in with her can of spray paint and start spraying as well. So clearly it takes a village for Auntie Ebony to get her furniture flips done these days. So if you are a mama or an auntie and you want to do this with the kiddos, 
you can see they went to town. They had a great time doing this and it is kid friendly because we're not going for a perfect finish. So this is the perfect project to let them help with. The thing with this method is you don't know how it will turn out until you've already wet the piece. But there were some areas that I just didn't think looked as good as others. So I let it dry completely and then I went back in with another coat of black paint. I just did one coat and then I started over. I let the, the paint dry and then I started over with my Dawn and my spray paint until I was able to get a look that I liked a little bit better. I thought if I turned this vertically and tried to spray it that way, I would get a different effect maybe once gravity took a hold. But I noticed that the Dawn started to drip and then the spray paint just weighed it down more and it started to kind of take off. So I quickly put it back horizontally and I just stuck with the way that I had been doing it before because I didn't want this drawer to be noticeably different and to be the only one with drip patterns when no other part of the piece has that. So I quickly just put it back down horizontally and then I went ahead with my water to expose the new look, which I did like a lot better than the previous run. Up next, I am mixing up some hot water with some baking soda and I will be adding in vinegar momentarily. I almost forgot the vinegar, but I did go back and add it in. And what that will do is that will be my cleaner for my hardware. I'm just using this initially with an old toothbrush to kind of clean off the surface dirt and grime. Then I let it soak inside the mixture for a little bit and then I came back in with more vinegar and the same old toothbrush to go ahead and try to actually polish it up. But I decided to go ahead and spray paint these so I am not trying to clean it back to the original finish in this case. For the purposes of this flip, I just wanted to really make sure that they were thoroughly clean so that my spray paint would look nice and lay flat. After making sure those were thoroughly dry, I went ahead and did one coat of my spray paint I waited several hours. I flipped the handles to the opposite direction for my second coat and then I went ahead and sprayed my second coat and allowed that to thoroughly dry as well. I had a mostly empty can of black spray paint and so since I knew it would sputter when I went to spray it, I decided to let that work in my favor for the hardware and I let it just sputter out over these and I think it gave a really cool effect. Here is the top coat that I am using in a clear gloss. I was kind of nervous because typically when I use polycrylic over black paint, I like to add some of the paint in. However, I could not do that because I did not want to mess up my gold paint. So I was really nervous to do this, but I did want a glossy finish, which if you've watched my previous flips, you have never seen me use a glossy top coat. But since this piece was leaning really edgy, I thought the glossy top coat would really set it off. I liked how it looked when the water was still on it, how it was really shiny, and I was trying to emulate that look. So that's what you see me doing here. With this, I am using my Home Right spray gun, which I really love to use for my top coats. And so it is a huge time saver. So top coating this whole thing literally took me about two minutes per coat. Before I show you the finished product, I just want to chime in and request that you subscribe to my channel and watch all of my old content. There are over 100 videos on this channel, so I have been working hard at it. Please do not forget to subscribe. So without further ado, here is the finished look of the piece. I think it turned out pretty cool. I was really excited to try this, so hopefully I conveyed that through this video. I want to thank you all so much for watching. Please let me know what you thought about this video in the comment section down below. If you learned something from it, if you enjoyed watching it, or if you just like to see me try new things, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. It really does help my channel grow and make my videos more visible to a wider audience. So once again, thank you guys so much for watching. 
I hope you learned something from or either really enjoyed this video. I had a ton of fun making it. And leave me any questions that you have in the comment section down below. And I always respond to everybody because I appreciate you watching. And I love interacting with you guys. So make sure that you leave me comments letting me know your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you guys in my next flip. Bye guys. If you have the time, please select another one of my videos to watch from the choices on your screen and in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching.